pretty windy inside this bay. Several uh, boats that look like they've been abandoned. The Ooster Shell. Saul Island of Cape Verde is located a few hundred miles off the western coast of Africa. We harbored in Palmeria, a small fishing harbor. I'm pretty fascinated by these boats. It reminds me of the old man in the sea. The harbor in Palmeria is littered with stray ropes and lobster pots. After checking the propeller for tangles, we were off for Mandillo. This is one of the more western islands of the Cape Verde archipelago. Okay. This is cool seeing the ultimate dive into the waves. Super freaking cool. It's a beautiful background. Background. Yeah. Well, that's cool. After the briefest moment of disbelief, with Quetzal's mast in the Atlantic, John immediately went for the hacksaw. We all stood silent for much longer, just trying to process the situation in which we now found ourselves. The 140-mile brisk sail to Mandelo had been transformed into a struggle to secure the mast and avoid more damage to Quetzal. Yeah, the whole head sail's no, underneath no. the boat. When John went forward with tools, we followed. The initial goal was to secure the mast to the hull, possibly even out of the water. The entire rig was in the water under the boat at this point, being dragged to windward. I realize it's terribly hard to hear because of the wind noise, but our main goal at this point is to secure the end of the mast. We're trying to fish out lines and cables that are dragging underneath the boat, and at the same time, lassoing the end of the mast 
and securing it to a winch to secure the mast to the side of the hull. Meanwhile, while we were working on deck, Ultima, in the background, was standing vigil waiting for their call to assist. They were wise to keep some distance to avoid any running rigging that was floating in the water. It was at this point that we realized that the head sails had to be disconnected from the bow. They were creating a lot of movement in the mast against the hull as the boat rolled in the swell. The final solution was to remove the cotter pins and hammer out the clevis pins. Both head stays were ultimately allowed to hang in the water from the masthead. I'll just snap right below the spreader. At this point we have this uh, mast down next to the boat. There's nothing poking into the hull. And uh, Ultima is heaving to this We're not too far from the... Uh, Tension on there? A lot of tension on there. Yeah. Okay. At this point, going on the assumption that the mast was now attached only by the inner shroud, we attached a strong line to the end of that inner shroud ran it through a block to a winch in the back. It was it was held quite tight. And at this point, John is hammering on that uh, clevis pin. And you can see it released with quite a bit of force. To our surprise, the mast did not move. It was still attached by a small tab of aluminum. Yeah. All right, let's try this once real quick. Let me get out of the way. I'll go get that one. So we have to release the red one. Don't lose it. Don't, Don't lose it. it. Yeah. Hey, we're, we're, the windlass isn't really working, so. Again, working on the incorrect assumption that we would be able to lower the mast into the water, we are now trying to bend the mast forward towards the bow to try to break the remaining tab of aluminum that is attaching the two pieces of the mast. It proved to be completely ineffective. To be clear again, we have complete control of the upper portion of the mast with the inner shroud that is actually draped over the lower mast segment. This shroud is tied securely, blocked, and then led to a winch. The lower portion of the mast is being moved forward in this maneuver. still attached, just like just a little piece of aluminum. You know, we've got three lines. At this point, we've secured the mast to the side of the boat. And uh, you know, I think the most important thing here is just getting back into the anchorage. And uh, ultimately, it's going to give us a tow. Here they come right now. They probably have several miles. And we've been out here for a few hours.
ever prepared, John floated some neon floating line that Ultima was able to pick up and start our tow. Well, our tow has just lost their engine, so now we've got the problem. Yeah. Is your fuel filter clogged? Yes, it looks like it is. Can you guys sail? Okay, we got their engine going again, and we are on our way. Still several miles out. It's definitely slow going. Very uh, yeah, rolly conditions. This mast is really just. It's just like a little flake, so it's a real dangerous area on the um, on the port side of the boat. Um, our line broke, or at least came came undone, and uh, there we floated another line for Ultima to grab, and we have it floated out, and we're waiting for them to come around and get it. Line. We lost our first tow line. This is our second tow line. Thank God it's the police. Yep. This is the aftermath. It's Morning. Just hanging on by a little tab. Hola, habla inglés? Here's Nathan from the last trip, and he <laughs> was kind enough to interrupt his day yesterday to tow us back. To safety. Well, my original thought was, all right, we can beat him to middle. <laughs> <laughs> so this I'm is a good exercise. We have a situation here with a with a broken mast where we have these cables all laying around. The question is, can he? Can and Nathan is strong as an ox. If you carry this on your boat, are you going to be able to cut through your wires? They just handed us a, an industrial size grenade to make sure we're good. Yeah. And she's down. It's you know, and they say that's where it, right, where it goes into the deck. It yeah. holds that moisture. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's classic. Absolutely classic. Cheers. Mast. Cheers to the mast. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't break. Yeah. <laughs> this is a fucking <laughs> Emmy waiting to happen. Oh, <laughs> Thanks for watching. After going through all this, I really can't say enough to compliment John Kretschmer throughout this ordeal. He never wavered. He was calm. He was thoughtful and deliberate. Most importantly, he listened to us, the crew. He didn't need to, but the collaboration helped us all deal with a very difficult situation. The extensive debrief that followed was incredible and extremely educational to all of us involved. The details of the debrief were best left to John to review during his Captain's Hour webcast. This can be found on the John Kretschmer Sailing website. I won't be missing this one.